हटाने के साथ साथ रियासत को क्यों तोड़ा गया कोर्ट कोर्ट से क्या उम्मीद है आपको कोर्ट से हमें ये चीफ जस्टिस साहब और सुप्रीम कोर्ट का ये इंसाफ के इस मंदिर में आए हैं और पूरा पूरा इंसाफ हमको मिलेगा और और हमें पूरी उम्मीद है एक करोड़ तीस लाख आवाम तब से खुशी की लहर जम्मू कश्मीर में दौड़ गई है जब से ये पता चला है कि तीन सौ आप रहने वाले सुनील जी आप रहने वाले कहाँ के जम्मू कश्मीर के जम्मू कश्मीर का बेटा हूँ जम्मू का डोगरा बेटा हूँ महाराजा हरि सिंह जी की दो साल पुरानी रियासत थी उसका बेटा हूँ और ये 370 के ऊपर सब गलत बोलते हैं कि वहाँ पे विकास हुआ डेवलपमेंट तो मैं, मैंने इसलिए पूछा कि अब रहने वाले कहाँ के हैं क्योंकि एक धारणा है कि जम्मू के लोग 370 को हटाने के पक्ष में थे लेकिन कश्मीर के लोग इसके पक्ष में नहीं थे न न न न न न 370 को हटाने के पक्ष में कोई भी नहीं था ये जबरन तरीके से अनकॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल तरीके से ये 370 सौ सत्तर पैंतीस को हटाया okay, गया बहुत 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 शुक्रिया सो देर देर आर सम पिटिशनर्स हुए ऑलरेडी रीच द सुप्रीम कोर्ट अर्ली दिस मॉर्निंग अनुषा आई एम सॉरी आई टू कट यू शॉर्ट दैर बट इट वॉज इम्पोर्टेंट टू गेट दीज वॉइस ऑल्सो दीज पिटिशनर्स आर होपिंग दैट द सुप्रीम कोर्ट विल वे इन ऑन वॉट देव आर्ग्यूड द आर्ग्यूमेंट देर बींग दैट इट वॉज रॉन्ग टू टेक अवे द स्पेशल स्टेटस एंड इट वॉज इवन रॉन्ग आर टू स्प्लेट द स्टेट ऑफ जम्मू एंड कश्मीर the aspire state of jammu and kashmir into jammu and kashmir and a separate union territory of ladakh uh, but you know coming back to what uh, has happened on inside the court um anything that that the judges observed during the course of these 16 hearings that happened anything that you can share about uh, you know tough questions that were perhaps asked to the government All right. I'm just going to finish the earlier point that you asked me about the historical relationship of the actual state of Jammu and Kashmir with the Union of India. Yes, that has been the moot uh, argument. Uh, the breach of accession of uh, the actual state of Jammu and Kashmir with the Union of India one of the, what was one of the key documents that was submitted before the Supreme Court of India. It was argued that this is a constitutional promise on which the leaders of today cannot go back, and the promise must be kept. What is the entire basis for making these arguments? Whether Article 370 was permanent in nature or whether it's temporary in nature, it goes to the Treaty of Accession. You have to read the Treaty of Accession to figure out the manner in which any state has been merged into uh, the Union of India, which is how the Constitution defines the country. Now, coming to the debate about were there any observations coming in from the bench? Yes, there were various observations that came from Sajjad Justice Sanjay Kishan Kaur, who at a point argued or questioned about the temporary status. He also argued that it, it seems to be a temporary provision. But I would really, really be very cautious because in subsequent hearings, in years of covering the Supreme Court, I've seen that. Your observations, the tone and tonality of it can be very different. Namaste, Jai Hind, and welcome to the CNN News 18 special broadcast on the 370 Judgment Day, ladies and gentlemen. In a short while from now, the Honorable Supreme Court is set to deliver its verdict on the challenge to the Centre's abrogation of Article 370. this decision that was taken with respect to the now union territory of jammu and kashmir and ladakh the erstwhile state of jammu kashmir ladakh namaste my name is anand narsimhan and with me in the studio is our consulting editor rahul shiv shankar but before we go across to him to understand what is important today will the top court of the country uphold ek desh ek vidhan ek samvidhan that's the big question the chief justice of india dy chandrachud will announce the judgment marking the end of a 16 day argument session that concluded on the 5th of september what will the verdict be that's the big question full a lot of hope uh, that we knocked on the doors uh, of the supreme court as any petitioner does
many noises are being made many arguments are being made it's a 16 day argument where very interesting observations were also made the movement of vehicles escorting carrying vips protected persons in troublesome areas is suggested to be avoided as well given the fact we don't know which way the verdict will swing political parties in jammu and kashmir eagerly anticipating the top court's decision meanwhile union minister or home minister amit shah will move uh, the two jnk bills jammu and kashmir bill and the jammu and kashmir reservation bill later on in the rajya sabha but first to rahul shiv shankar are you waiting with bated breath or is this a foregone conclusion rahul very good morning to you uh, anand and very good morning to akhand bharat today akhand bharat will be vindicated i have no doubt about it it's only a matter of time and let me tell you this will be the ultimate tribute to shyama prasad mukherji you began the show by mentioning a very famous slogan that he had hmm. basically come up with 1953 this man viewers who was the founder of the bharatiya jansang which eventually became the bharatiya janta party died unheralded in kashmir let's not ever forget that let's ever not forget that and he did so because he went there in a protest against whom jawahar lal nehru why because jawahar lal nehru decided to create this great architecture of otherness hmm. and why do i call it an architecture of otherness i will explain to you in just a few moments but let me tell you when it was first considered mm. it came as 306a mm. into the constituent assembly not one person except for the points person of nehru mm. agreed with this piece of legislation the points person of nehru was gopala swami ayangar who was asked to draft this particular architecture of otherness this architecture of separatism because that's all that it can be called and as a kashmiri hindu a part kashmiri hindu i can tell you how we have all suffered years together but that we will explain you will hmm. explain in just a few moments but let me just quickly give you a quick outline of what happened really back in time and how this came about and became such a big divisive issue in this country So basically Nehru was very keen to give in to Sheikh Abdullah's demand that Kashmir should enjoy some sort of a special status. He was told by many many people and I have documented this in my book that is here right now. And he said that this because we must remember that we are a large hearted people and that this particular state acceded to us under special considerations. Hmm. and we must meet those considerations and therefore he gave in to sheikh abdullah not one person hmm. not one person let me tell you in the constituent assembly was convinced not even dr b r ambedkar of course at that time the union home minister was mr patel but mr patel was not in the loop in all of this yes. because mr nehru had appointed gopal swami ayangar and let me tell you Anand, there is a, there is a lot uh, that we can discuss on history. There was a lot that was packed in, which yes. will take years to unravel. But let me tell you that only one man got up in the Constituent Assembly, and he was a Communist Party leader, Mr. Mohani, and he says, "Why this discrimination? Correct. How can there be two Indias?" And that's when, at one point in time, Shyama Prasad Mukherjee quit Nehru's cabinet in 1953. 1953 he leads a protest march in kashmir kashmir he writes letters to nehru and one letter he wrote let me tell you why did he write that letter because nehru attacked him in a letter in february hmm. of 1953 five day later he wrote and he says is there anything communal or reactionary or anti national about it the agitation because he had taken out an agitation yeah. against this if india's constitution is good enough for the rest of india why should it not be acceptable to the state of jammu and kashmir It is amazing how the move for separatism pursued by Sheikh Abdullah and his colleagues is being applauded by you as national and patriotic and the genuine desire on part of the Praja Parishad to secure the fundamental unity and integrity of India to be governed as common Indian citizens is being dubbed as treacherous. Hmm. Think in your cool moments how in your life history of failure to stand against Muslim communalism in India has resulted in disastrous consequences perhaps you and others followed a policy of concession and appeasement with the highest motive but in ultimate the country came to be partitioned against your own repeated declarations to the contrary at that time a factor of very great importance which worked against us was the existence of an alien power which wanted to function on the policy of divide and rule if today we want to be cautious and avoid the tragic follies of the past 
We do so in the highest interest of the country and not for any narrow communal ends or any sectarian interest and so, look how so it So for the, for the larger interest of Bharat and I think that's where this Ek Desh, Ek Vidhan, Ek Samvidhan was coined ladies and gentlemen. But this is not just about history and how 370 had come. There were arguments that 370 had been diluted over the course of many years. But why should there be uh, two constitutions, two courts, two different uh, penal courts in the same country? It is in the manner in which 370 was abrogated. That's where the petition comes down and boils down to and that's where it was challenged. The legality of the method of abrogation of 370 was what was tend to be challenged. Of course, there were ulterior motives behind it. We've got news coming through. Petitioner Council Kapil Sibal has posted on uh, Platform X. And he has said uh, some battles are fought to be lost. For history must record the uncomfortable facts for generations to know. The right and wrong of institutional actions will be debated for years to come. History alone is the final arbiter of the moral compass of historic decisions. History alone is the final uh, arbiter of the moral compass. So this is what Kapil Sibal has posted. Ananya Bhatnagar joins us live. Some battles are fought to be lost. <laughs> Does that mean that they have already thrown in the towel? They know what the decision is going to be, Ananya. And history must record uncomfortable facts. The facts about what has happened with 370, how it came into play, how the Home Minister of the country was kept in the dark, how the Prime Minister of the country sacrificed and compromised Bharat's interests. These are all uncomfortable facts too. Well, definitely, Anand, all of these are uncomfortable facts and there seems to be a preempt of the judgment today by Senior Advocate Kapil Sipil, who had uh, led these submissions for, uh, in fact, the petitioners. In fact, he was the first one to begin these arguments on day one, very, very categorically saying that with, that with the abrogation of Articles 370, the state has lost everything, the people have lost their mandate and, in fact, the right to be consulted with as well has been lost by the people of the Jammu and Kashmir. However, the central government coming in with a strong defence saying that it is in a very, very, you know, it is going to restore that statehood to the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Mm. The elections would be held very, very soon, though a particular timeline was not given. But definitely a framework of the electoral system in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, um, that would be a state of Jammu and Kashmir, had been given by the Solicitor General of India on the day 14th of that particular hearing, very, very clearly stating that, you know, there would be a three-tier Panchayati Raj system yes. that would be introduced first. Uh, uh, there would be elections to the Panchayati Raj. See, then, it's all about uh, what is going uh, to happen finally, here after Ananya. See, so in terms of the 14, 15 day hearing, like you said on day 14, they said what's going to happen now? It's not about what has already happened. So was that indicative of which way this entire decision is going to swing? It is about bringing together Bharat as one. Akhand Bharat, no more partitioning of Bharat. Akhand Bharat has different interpretations for different people. We are talking it from uh, saying it from one point where it says that this is one Bharat since 1947. It should not have different interpretations and different routes across its various states and union territories. Now, what are the arguments made by the petitioners in the Supreme Court before we bring back Rahul and also go across to our other reporters? The first argument that Article 370 became permanent after dissolution of the, of the Jammu and Kashmir Constituent Assembly in 1957. That's the first argument. Second argument is that the powers of Legislative Assembly of State can't be taken over by the Parliament or by the Centre. The third argument is Constituent Assembly can't be substituted by the Legislative Assembly for Jammu and Kashmir. The fourth argument is that the state is part of the basic structure doctrine. Jammu and Kashmir can't be an exception. Argument 5. Violation of the constitutional promise as no merger agreement was signed with Jammu and Kashmir. So these are the five arguments that have been made. In it itself, there are a bunch of contradictions, Rahul, because on the one hand, in argument number 4, they say that Jammu and Kashmir cannot be an exception. But 370 itself was on the ground that Jammu and Kashmir will be an exception. So, chit bhi peri, pat bhi mera, you know, heads I went, tails you lose kind of argument that have been made by the petitioners. But there were countermeasures that were taken. In the build-up to the abrogation itself, the constituent assembly was deemed to be legislative assembly as per the presidential uh, notice. Absolutely, uh, you're absolutely right. Today, of course, uh, viewers, let's just home in on the exact issue that is going to come up for consideration, which is, as Anand has been telling us, whether the Constituent Assembly's writ, which was dissolved in 1957 of Kashmir, prevails, or is it union government represented by the Lieutenant Governor who passed that order 
in consultation with the president. Now, I want to draw your attention to what Chief Justice of India, D.Y. Chandrachud, had said on September 4th. On this particular point, he said, petitioners were placing Article 370 on a pedestal loftier than the basic structured doctrine of the Constitution and even beyond the reach of the amending powers of Parliament. Can you believe it? This was the concession that was made. This was the concession that was made. And let me tell you this argument about, oh, the Constituent Assembly, that cannot be considered a legislative assembly, etc., etc., slightly fallacious. We had spoken to Harish Salve at one point even in the context of the research for my book. And he had said that, look, the Constituent Assembly dissolved hmm. in 1957. And it did not proclaim whether the Article 370 should continue or whether it should be withdrawn. Yeah. And then quite obviously from there on, just like at the center, where the parliament of the day, the central legislature of the day took over from the constituent assembly, the legislative assembly of Kashmir took over from the constituent assembly of its state. Yeah. And because there was president's rule, there was central rule, Anand, the president could take a basic call on this in consultation with the lieutenant governor who was the executive authority in the state, in the state. on August 19th. Now, uh, August, uh, August 5th, uh, 2019. So, so yes, 3rd of 29th. August, 4th of August, yes. the entire uh, decisions yeah. were taken. The yeah. uh, decision was then ratified by the parliament, both in both the houses and with 370 votes. That's, that's what also happened. The 370 went with nearly 370 votes in the house. But uh, what did the centre tell... Uh, the, the, the top court in its counter arguments. We'll go back to Ananya after we just bring you through the counter arguments. Why abrogation was needed? The first argument was the 2019 Pulwama attack prompted the 370 accident. This was the biggest revelation that said that the biggest thought towards comprehensively removing 370 was the attack in Pulwama. Can't fault change that brings everyone at par. And Article 370 was not meant to be permanent. It was always called a temporary provision and it had got to go. In fact, around the time Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru's uh, demise at that time, the Congress was largely in consensus that 370 had to go, but then it didn't happen. Uh, argument 4, Article 35A was discriminatory to many and 35A was not even mentioned. It was supp supposed to be one of the subprints and footnotes in the constitution which many in the top court lawyers were not aware when the matter came to be heard in 2014 between 2010 and 2014 that something like this even existed. Argument 5, hindrance to rights projected as pride. So these were some of the aspects which have been counter-argued. Ananya is with us. Ananya, the verdict is expected, what, around 10.30? So you will be going in in just a bit. So what can we expect? It will be a one-line verdict or do you think that there will be a detailed reading done by Justice Chandrachud before the final verdict is pronounced? Well, definitely, it would be a detailed reading of, uh, you know, the judgment that has been uh, rendered by the Chief Justice of India and the other judges on the bench. Remember, this is a constitution bench matter, so there might be one or two judgments as well. So, we'll have to see if at all there are different judgments coming in that the, the judges would be reading out their own part of the judgment and whether or not they concur or uh, send to it. So, we'll have to wait and watch for that. Definitely, as you're pointing out the central government's argument, the central government began by saying that under Article 1, Jammu and Kashmir is very well a part of the country. It is very well a part of India and that's exactly what the central government's pitch has remained. Apart from that, the central government argued that 370 was a temporary provision. It had to go some someday or the other. And in fact, the Constituent Assembly, when it introduced uh, Article 370 in the Constitution of India, had in mind that Jammu and Kashmir is a very well a part of India and that's exactly why there cannot be two constitutions. There cannot be a Jam uh, constitu constitution for Jammu and Kashmir is what had been argued by the central government. Another and the most important facet that the central government has been pushing for from day one is that this particular exercise that was carried out on August 5, 2019 has resulted in restoration of peace and has given a big tourism hit to the state, uh, to Jammu and Kashmir and that's exactly so, why this is a very, very important exercise see, and it was a rectification that, that, of the mistake that's where, that's that had happened see, in the past. rectification of a mistake is a valid argument. Peace, progress, vikas, uh, everything is a valid argument going forward. But that act itself, the way, the manner in which it was done, was it in the legal framework that is provided by the constitution, by the Samvidhan? That's the bigger question. Ananya, you're going in. We'll have Anusha and Arunima joining us. We also have our guest this morning. We have uh, Kapil Madan with us at this point. Uh, we'll also have uh, Ashutosh Srivastava, lawyer and political analyst. And uh, 
we will uh, be also joined by uh, one one more of our guests at this point farooq renzusha is not yet with us but one yes, point on yes, this Rahul. question that you have been asking hmm. about the legality of this hmm. so let me tell you that haris salve when he spoke to me uh. he said the following he said that there has been legal precedent legal precedent when uh. the government substituted with reference to the constituent assembly of the state to legislative assembly of the state yeah so on that point about whether the constituent assembly after it dissolved things become written in stone on that point he actually put the precedent saying that no other actions had been taken hmm. after the constituent assembly was dissolved to further dilute the provisions of article 370 what did he say first time it was done when sadar yasir was substituted with governor hmm. by amending 367 Through the mechanism of Article 371D, the Supreme Court said that absent that, it would have to consult whether the governor is a successor to the Sadar Yasser. If the president has done it by amending Article 367, that's another way of doing it. That is exactly the problem which has come up. The central government has traced its steps on precedent, so the legal argument is strong, and therefore perhaps why Captain Sibal is saying a bro. You know, There's some battle that fought to be lost. Yeah. Now, some key questions. The Supreme Court will be examining today before we go across to our guests and we get a confirmation of who all are through with us. Some key questions are one. Was Article 370 of the Constitution intended to be a permanent provision? First question: Can the President abrogate the special status of Jammu and Kashmir under Article 370 with the adopt the assent of the Legislative Assembly of the of JNK? That's the one. Because the Legislative Parliament, uh, the Assembly had been dissolved. It was under settled rule or uh, the left hand rule at that time. Was the organization of JNK in two duties, union territories tenable? That was another part of another petition. Could Jammu and Kashmir retain its sovereignty since it signed the instrument of accession and not a merger agreement? As since legislative assembly had been dissolved at the time, can parliament or the governor be a substitute for the same? So these are some of the questions that need to be answered. We'll go across to our guests also uh, joining us at this time. Kapil Madan, Ashutosh Shivastava are with us. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Namaste. We we'll also have Sanjay Rana, political analyst, with us. So let me ask Ashutosh Shivastava, where do you stand on the legality of this all? If there is no legislative assembly, does the LG have the powers? And if an act has to be amended, there shouldn't it be an act of parliament? Does that, is that not what is mandated by the constitution? See, uh, what I understand, and I, uh, as per my opinion, Article three sixty eight of the constitution gives uh, you know complete powers to the to the parliament to make amendments, mm. and accordingly, the amendments have been carried out. There are procedures laid down, and mm. all these procedures have been uh, followed uh, by the Parliament mm. and by the by the President of India. Mm. And I am sure the same uh, thing will come up in the order which we are expecting uh, today. Mm. And uh, that uh, uh, you know, as 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 the citizens of this country, we feel that the abrogation of Article 370 will be up, up, upheld by the Supreme Court. Mm. And uh, see uh, there have been many transition even if we see the submissions of uh, uh, you know karan singh hmm. the 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 ruler of jnk the i mean being the son of hari singh uh. his proclamation was also like that those proclam uh, proclamations were also considered where it was clearly stated on 25th november uh. 1949 hmm. that uh, you know which clarifies that the sovereignty of jnk was transferred to the dominion of india hmm. and also if we consider part 21 of the constitution which talks about uh, the temporary arrangements being made and this has also been kept under article uh, under part 21 of the constitution hmm. so it was not a permanent uh, any uh, uh, amendment being made yes hmm. that uh, since it was not further uh confirmed and finalized and right. accordingly it 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 had the temporary uh, nature and yeah. accordingly this article 370 earlier if we know uh, years back also it was discussed and it was to be abrogated but unfortunately it could not take place yeah. so there are provisions and as as per the provisions only it has been done so basic issue will be article 368 hmm. whether parliament is having such powers or not and i'm sure hmm. uh considering further amendments being made if we see article 248 which right. was amended by the same parliament uh by making amendment uh in 1972 right and it was also confirmed and clarified that that yes the par parliament was having such rights hmm. so since there was no permanent uh, nature of constituent assembly of jnk hmm. and hence this kind of amendment <laughs> was very much possible 
and accordingly so, by uh, following due process of law it has been amended and i'm sure the same uh, uh, you know observations will come in the judgment so today. you are saying that due process has been followed and there is a certain level of due diligence the former president ramnath kovind ji himself is a very very uh, amenable mind with uh, a seasonable amount of experience uh, with uh, you know as far as law is concerned and legal practice is concerned but kapil madan your point of view on this so anand you know uh, one thing is very very clear the basic premise of the challenge is that you know we all know then when 370 was introduced it was a temporary provision and since the constitutional assembly was dissolved i mean it is argued that it they became permanent so the issue before the honorable supreme court in nutshell is whether the parliament has an you know amending power to amend uh, uh 370 because it was temporary at that uh, at that point in time the moot question which the honorable supreme court will be discussing would be whether this amount so how do you define temporary sir? how do you define uh, uh, temporary alteration of the basic how, of how do you define temporary order. temporary is uh, two because months three months five months 10 years 15 years With 70 years 75 years what is temporary no 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 i i i i don't define temporary no i don't define temporary what i am is that it was being argued by the uh, petitioner in the uh, supreme court and now it is for the supreme court to decide when the constitution assembly was dissolved because there is a provision in the uh, so, but, constitution uh, uh -huh. if the provision is there if you want to remove the provision the process that needs to be followed yeah so so, so, so if you have to remove the provision again the same parliamentary procedure has to be followed Ar arunima and anusha with us raul kamath in just which is going to uh, both arunima yeah. and anusha who been covering this since morning they've all spoken to all sides of the uh, uh, spectrum in terms of those who have argued for and against uh, 370 and petition in front of the honorable supreme court anusha first coming across to you legally those people who have in the past politically said that 370 has been diluted over the years today are saying 370 should have not gone in this manner and they are already saying this battle is hmm. lost well uh, anand all i can tell you is that the procedure by which the government has amended this particular provision and something that rahul was also pointing out that there is a constitutional precedent for it uh, the case that rahul was talking about is uh, the case of mohammad maqbool damnu versus jnk mm. and in that particular case the term sadre riyasat it was substituted by the term governor if you look at the history ever since the accession of the erstwhile territory of jammu and kashmir to the union of india the erstwhile mm. state, there have been multiple changes that the government of india has made and all those changes have been via article 367 hmm. that particular article forms the tool hmm. the procedural article through which you make changes hmm. now the argument of the petitioners is the change that you have made is constitutional in nature and vitiates the basic structure of the constitution hmm. is that something the court is going to accept that's a wait and watch and second point very briefly is also about the powers of the president under 356 right. that the president without the consultation of the Legis legislative assembly could not have done that and the will of the people was not really taken into account the two moot arguments hmm. that have been presented before the court well, when we are, talk about yeah. the basic structure doctrine and hmm. which is invoked so often and uh, i must say that um, you know she's really done a homework here Let's also not forget hmm. that the basic structure doctrine hmm. promises equality to all citizens of this country of all their basic rights. Hmm. Now you know that this Article Three Seventy actually discriminates on the ground between various kinds of citizens in Jammu and Kashmir. Hmm. So you have certain sections of our society completely hmm. at one level suppressed. and consigned to doing menial jobs hmm. the nhrc's writ is not extendable to that particular state till of course recently and i think where you know we forget and i hmm. think uh, that has been pointed out right now is that 54 occasions on 54 occasions president presidential orders have been passed to extend the provisions of the indian constitution to the state so already 54 occasions this presidential power presidential orders have been passed to invoke certain 
But no, there, so there the counter argument only and just playing uh, the yeah, counter yeah, here, Rahul, is that when these in these 54 uh, 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 instances when presidential orders were passed, was the legislative assembly of Jammu and Kashmir on boarded at that time? Was it was there a government that was so called elected government there and yeah. which ratified these presidential orders and confirmed to implementing them? So what does Article 373 state? Hmm. In the constitution, it clearly states that the president may by public notification declare that this article shall cease to be operative. Now, the following three words are provided that the recommendation of the constituent assembly of the state shall be necessary before the president issues such a notification. Hmm. Now, of course, the, uh, the constituent assembly was dissolved, right. stood dissolved in 1957. The legislative assembly was in place, but there was obviously governor's rule. Okay. And we know that once there is governor's rule, it comes all the way see, back to see, the president. That's, see, that's what they're saying. See, when the argument was not there, Arunima, coming back to you, where you spoke to petitioners from both sides. One of the aspects is now they are saying that this was supposed to be done with the constituent assembly, and there is no constituent assembly. That means 370 becomes president, uh, you know, permanent. That's the argument. The other argument is that we interpret it con conveniently, constituent assembly as legislative assembly till the time 370 was abrogated. So, till then, the uh, local government in power acted as the constituent assembly, despite the fact that it's been a legislative assembly since 1957. Yes, the government has argued that the parliament was well within its right. The constituent assembly, uh, you know, is, is something when... Uh, you know, the parliament decided to legislate on uh, 370. Uh, it was in sync with what the constitution had said. The petitioner's argument is, like you're pointing out, that the constituent assembly is, uh, is equal, equivalent to the legislative assembly. The central government's argument is that the parliament has that power. The second question to be debated is uh, that since an instrument of accession was uh, signed, is uh, Jammu and Kashmir then uh, not similarly placed as the other state? Does it then retain its sovereignty? So all of these, of these questions are before the Supreme Court. But the petitioners, uh, you know, the sense that I get after speaking to them is that the bigger concern, the bigger relief that they seem to be expecting is on the question of statehood. The government itself has committed as far as the statehood question is concerned. They have said that we will restore statehood when is a matter of time. The Election Commission will have to decide that. So I think the petitioners are keener to, to see if the Supreme Court sets a timeline, if it gets, gives any instructions uh, to the government that you must do this in this particular timeline. Uh, so, other than that, as so, far as 370 so it's not is about concerned, hindsight. Uh, most of the petitioners... <laughs> It's about what's the way forward. How soon can we go back to becoming a state? So that's where the petitioners are looking at. So they have decided yes, I that... Think, I think realistically, Anand, there is, there is more or less this acceptance. Hmm. Realistically, from the sense that I get from the petitioners is that it will be difficult for the Supreme Court to turn the clock back. No, so not just clock back, even question the legality of it because the President's office had vetted it, the Home Minister's office had vetted it and the Parliament has ratified this. And that also, at that time, the arguments were largely political saying, how can you allow 370 to go? Because many thought 370 will never go. Although those very people said 370 has been far diluted. Just about one minute on the clock before the verdict begins, we got visuals coming in from the courtroom. It's all in camera, so everything is now broadcast. The days have changed, times they have changed so much. Earlier, uh, nothing from the court could be quoted. Now everything from the court can be seen and heard. Uh, Farooq Renzu Shah is with us. Farooq Renzu Shah ji, what do you expect? I tell you one thing. Uh, the way it has been handled in the judiciary, it has been handled, it has been by the lawyers who are pleading it, hmm. have not pleaded well. I tell you very honestly. Even if she was selling the statehood, hmm. what do you mean by statehood? Are they surrendering Gilgit Baltistan and POK to Pakistan? Hmm. Because state should be defined. The state which has been part of the accord. Hmm. Accord of 26th of October. The map. The map is missing. If uh, Supreme Court will also miss hmm. uh, our that territory, which is no doubt under adverse position of Pakistan, hmm. but it is part of India. Hmm. And if no, no lawyer, even Capital Sibyl, hmm. has, is in record in telling in the Supreme Court that I am not bothered about the history, I am not bothered about the uh, territory which is with the other side. Hmm. So it means he has supplied the case of even India. It is a case of India. Hmm. Uh, 
घास नहीं उगती क्या इसको भी बेच दोगे सो इसको भी दे दोगे सो कुछ नहीं उगता तो इसको भी दे दोगे सो दैट सो देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ हिस्ट्री विच इज अनकंफर्टेबल विच नीड्स टू बी स्टेटेड but it is about today it's about what happened on the 5th 3rd 4th and 5th of august 2019 and going forward what will happen in 2023 and 2024 another aspect that we need to always uh, we need to also consider ashutosh rana uh, ashutosh shivastava is with us uh, and uh, i just quickly uh, and sanjay rana is with us. sanjay rana is not spoken yet sanjay rana one of the aspects is that three tier panchayati system three tier electoral system ddc elections were not conducted under the erstwhile state of jammu and kashmir panchayat elections had not been conducted for nearly 70 years so how is it even democratic and are you for two constitutions in the same country two flags in the same country two penal codes in the same country Uh, good morning, Anand. Good morning to my fellow panelists. First of all, we should. Is India is a democratic country, and we should not have two vidhan or two samvidhan concept at all because it's discriminating between the citizen of this country. Hmm. When we look at the complete story, it's very very surprising because people are talking. It's three seventy is a permanent. It cannot be temporary because of constituents assembly. Uh, has been dissolved in 1957 if something is dissolved then is there's no existence of that particular uh, uh, assembly or a particular point obviously whatever the things are there is called legislative assembly will take care of everything and what this um, uh, you know uh, uh, 370 was implemented obviously at that point of time uh, president rule was there and president can take any call so lot of things are there which are manipulated or which are trying to uh trying to twist and present uh, front of the court but if you look at the the major points obviously the one 370 second one is institution uh, vacation is called how you can create a two state uh, uh if you look at any article 3 which is categorically defined how the state is going to be formed if um, uh, a governor how if, if the case of uh, president rule governor will take care of if it's not governor rule sure. who will take care of that so, so all the details are there when we talk about the assembly election and all obviously uh, it will taking care by uh, election commission it will defined by the election commission but if you look at uh, from from uh, the road the map has been said to sanjay ji the fact is that delimitation commission has done its job its recommendations have been submitted ddc elections and mayoral body and municipal council elections will be conducted very very soon those dates are scheduled to be announced and uh, soon uh, sooner than later we will have the vidhan sabha elections or the or the or the union territory heading towards vidhan sabha and eventually towards statehood there's a road map yeah, Yeah, that's yes. that, that on your screens are the five benches justice chandrachud is going to preside this five judge bench that comprises of justice sanjay kishan call sanjeev khanna br gawai and justice suryakant and they should be getting in you can see all the lawyers it's a packed court room right now those are the visuals before the proceeding start quick rea- reaction coming in from the jammu and kashmir lg manoj sena first response towards the pdp's claim uh, mehboob mufti's claim that she is being kept under house arrest and uh, that's been rubbish listen in ये पूरी तरह से निराधार है पूरे जम्मू कश्मीर में न ही किसी को हाउस अरेस्ट किया गया है न ही किसी न ही किसी को गिरफ्तारी न ही किसी की गिरफ्तारी की गई और ये भ्रामक अफवाह फैलाने की कोशिश है मैं बड़ी जिम्मेदारी से बात कर रहा हूँ कि पूरे जम्मू कश्मीर में राजनीतिक कारणों से किसी को न गिरफ्तार किया गया है न हाउस अरेस्ट किया गया है Congress is saying we'll wait for the verdict before we even react. Manikam Tagore has said we'll wait, produce the judgment, and then thereafter react. Uh, meanwhile, the BJP MPs are now gathering outside uh, the statue to say corruption ki dukaan on uh, the amount of money that's been now still being counted at a Congress MP's residence uh, in uh, Jharkhand, and that's where the questions are being raised around him: how much money and how is it uh, so much? Why even as the Congress distances itself, corruption ki dukaan is trending 370 somewhere. Rahul Shiv Shankar. Everyone believes it's going to be about what the court decides should be the road going ahead, not about those who want to continue to look back and call back history. You know that obviously is a point that will come up, but I think that's the lesser point, quite frankly, because mm. that is in the prerogative, really, of 
a large number of other agencies, even the government can't jump to deciding when elections should take place. That's with the EC to decide. Also, of course, there is the largest security. You know, it's a very mm. sensitive border state and we continue to forget that. So there is a security dimension to this entire issue. And I can tell you that the Supreme Court will also be considering all of this. So I don't think that there's going to be any sort of um, order that will deny any of these authorities a final say in determining. I think there will be a blank assertion of the fact that status must be restored, the democratic process, the electoral process, not the democratic process, the electoral process must get underway forthwith as soon as conditions allow. I think that's the kind of general thrust. But coming back, today is when the, going when the to court be historic. advised the governor, uh, government that all of the state of Jammu and Kashmir should be brought together? Yeah, of course. I mean, no one is that, denying that. No one is denying statement. that. And I think that I don't, will be I don't a big think... statement when I say all of the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Yes, of course. But you see, there are certain realities which we can't overlook. The mm. court might, you know, obviously all Indians would love POK to be reunited with India and of course Aksai Chin and all of that. But those are realities that I don't think even a court can today uh, change on the ground. <laughs> you know, mm. it comes to, there are a lot of known unknowns. So, you know, that from a grander sort of, you know, pronouncement uh, and mm. obviously a reaffirmation of India's territorial integrity and sovereignty, that sentiment remains and mm. that should be reiterated at every possible moment in every platform. But, but as you peruse the details, you're somebody who's deep dive, uh, dived into it and we are just standing by for the verdict. So we'll keep those pictures from the courtroom on the screen along with our guests. But Rao Shankar, lead this conversation with our guests on whether or not the methodology pursued has been totally legal. There is no illegality in the methodology pursued by the government in 2019 to abrogate 370. Well, it all will come down to what the court believes uh, and which side it actually decides to favor. I think, you know, you yourself, Anand, mm. have sort of stated on that uh, big wall behind you the arguments. And I mm. think there are two or three things that we need to really look at very closely. I think it was point three or four you mentioned in the first set of graphics that you brought out, mm. the basic structure doctrine. Now, the basic structure doctrine also informs us all. And, and I, I, I would like to bring in the, uh, mm. the lawyers amongst us, especially the gentlemen um, to our left, yeah. and Ashutosh Srivastava. Ashutosh, Srivastava. Ashutosh you and know, Sanjay the Rana. basic structure can be a guiding light and it must be a guiding light, but it must apply equally to the fact that Article 370 was in itself violative of the basic structure that guarantees us certain basic rights. Rights were denied uh, to a huge section of people there. And uh, whether it was the Valmikis, whether it was Hindu refugees freeing the rapacity of religious persecution in Pakistan, whether it was people who decided to marry out of the state, uh, their children, a number of their yes. rights were proscribed. So obviously the Supreme yes, Court yes. will have to look at this. Yes, go ahead, please. Yes, yes, yeah, that's absolutely correct. And I'm sure uh, not only the legality, but also the interest of the citizens of this country and the people staying in Jammu and Kashmir, their interest will also be taken care of by the Supreme Court because it will also see in any judgment, the court also goes uh, to to uh, beyond its uh, this thing where they consider the, the, you know, the interest of the people, how it has to be protected, how what will be better for them. The public opinion also forms, uh, a, you know, a very strong kind of a decision making process while delivering such kind of a judgment, which has to see the democratic system, the legality, the future of the country, the interest of the people and the, and the citizens of the uh, country, and also the equality between all the citizens have also to be restored. And as you rightly said that 370 itself was violative of the you know, fundamental rights uh, be, being given by the same constitution to all the citizens of this country. See, Why a lot of people you know, who are challenging of, this, a lot of lot yes. of people who are challenging this, Ashutoshi, and I'm bringing in Sanjay Rana and Farooq Renshu Shah on this, would say all these arguments are acceptable. 
370 was wrong. It was denying people rights. 35A was a footnote and it was again a, a blot on our constitution. You couldn't have two separate constitutions. The Jammu and Kashmir High Court See. couldn't be reinterpreting a different penal code altogether and be uh, a different constitution. But Sanjay Rana, it is about if this has to go, but how was it sent away? How was it abrogated? Was it done fairly in accordance with the provisions of our constitution? There is some movement there uh, among the benches. All the all the lawyers are still seated. As soon as the judges walk in, the, the hearing will uh, will start shortly. Let's just go full frame to those visuals if we can uh, before we come back to the conversation and let's see what's happening. Uh, the verdict is shortly. There you go. The five judges' benches are still uh, empty at this point. They should all be walking in and taking their position. The centre chair will be presided. That will be the Chief Justice of Stair, Justice D.Y. Chandrachur leading this five-judge bench that uh, includes Justice Sanjay Kishan Kaul and uh, uh, others. Uh, we, but Sanjay Rana, was the manner in which 370 was sent away totally above board? Uh, absolutely. I think uh, it was the right way and the right approach to remove uh, uh, Article 370 uh, from uh, from Kashmir, and uh, I don't see there is ever any ambiguity in terms of uh, legal procedure is concerned. If you look at who is who is heading, uh, when we talk about the uh, uh, Constituent Assembly or legislative legislative assembly, if it is not there, then who is the next? Obviously, the governor and uh, uh, president is uh, you know president rule is there. The president will take a call on the basis of that they have taken a right decision. Obviously, they have consulted the various legal expert. They look at the various legal expert in terms of legality is concerned. Obviously, they have looked at all the parameters what we are discussing. I am not talking about the what exactly happened in the past. Forget about the past, but look at how is implemented so i think they have uh, followed all the due procedures and uh, implemented this particular removed the abrogation abrogate this particular uh, 370 but if when we talk about the 35a which is very very important because rahul was discussing mm. it's discriminating as a hindu i cannot go there as a balmiki i cannot go there and buy anything as a obc i cannot go and buy anything and it's, it's a totally discrimination between the citizen of india and the citizen of kashmir so i think from both the side it was a discriminating and if it is the fundamental right of the uh, fundamental right of every citizen then why we cannot go there and buy a land because why we cannot go and live there and marry each other it's, everything is possible in this in this country but it was not there because of certain law number one number two when we talk about how it's implemented because the, if you look at couple simple statement when mm. in, in the beginning the statement he knew very well he is aware about that it's the, what is going to come against him that's why he's making such kind of statement should not be embarrassed for him mm. number two number three what are the procedures? There are the three points where discussion started and three points, uh, you know, Supreme Court uh, judges, five bench judges made the categorical statement. Mm. One was the uh, uh, permanent uh, 370 is a permanent or not, is a temporary or permanent Our argument is given uh, mm. by uh, by the judges. Second was the institution vacations called how your, uh, you know, uh, uh, recognition of a state. Okay. Right. The third one was third third was 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 about uh, about something See, I missed some that words particular some point. words some words sanjay ji some words that, uh, as you make all the arguments a lot of arguments are stacked up against 370 and they've been stacked up for a while but some words yeah. in our constitution and in our legal provisions need to be defined properly words like temporary words like minority word there are other words too within our constitution yeah. that are ambiguous and they are open to interpretation they need to be very very clearly defined so so that we don't have any any situations going forward. The other point, yes. Farooq Renzu Shah, if the court upholds the abrogation of 370, then not does it have parliament sanction, it also has legal sanction. So this argument and this entire uh, aspect is, you know, settled once and for all. Even though four years since the abrogation of 370, this is happening, the argument then stands settled. There is nobody, no looking back at this again and again. Yeah, correct you are. As uh, Rahul Shivshankar has really rightly said, uh, the provision was itself a uh, doctrine of the violation. Mm. Even uh, the history, uh, if you see the statements, the architect of these articles were uh, the Delhi Accord, uh, Pandit Jawaharlal mm. Nehru and Sheikh Mohammed Abdullah. Mm. And when Sheikh Mohammed Abdullah uh, was in uh, earlier stage of a plebiscite stage, when he was talking of the plebiscite, and he said uh, to the Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and the Congress that they are the insects of the gutter. 
because of this 370 uh, uh, mm. when it was amended earlier. Then when he himself sat on the chair as the chief minister, when he was asked in the press conference how you have reduced the chair of prime minister, having the second prime minister in the country, to the, uh, the chair of chief minister, he said it is not the Quranic version. 370 is not a Quranic version. So this is the in record. So I think uh, hmm. of, you know, uh, where, the architect uh, of the 370. Uh, Farooq, so, my, uh, so it where will, we need to focus our attention is what in the context of these hearings, yeah. I think Anand, that's hmm. what you're trying to derive here, is that certain observations have been made to oppose any move to abrogate, right? So one of the things that was said was that the state did not sign a merger agreement, but actually sign an instrument of accession. And hmm. therefore, if you today abrogate that Article 370, then it becomes sovereign. Now, wh what is the Supreme Court itself observed? Some of the observations, now let's go over. The Supreme Court said the surrender of Jammu and Kashmir's sovereignty to India was absolutely complete with the accession of the former princely state in October 47. It was really difficult to say that the Article 370 of the Constitution had accorded special status to the erstwhile state was a permanent in nature. So hmm. even the Supreme Court's Chief Justice of India, Mr. Chandrachud, has said that it is very difficult yeah. to say that. Uh, that the constitution accords a special status, uh, permanent status to Article 370. Then, secondly, he went on to say, constitution does not restrict the president from reorganizing a state. The Correct. Supreme Court observed on Wednesday, which was on August 16, 2023, responding to an argument to the effect, while hearing matter of abrogation of Article 370 and the restructuring of Jammu and Kashmir into two union territories. Then he went on to say on August 17, not correct to say Article 370 assumes state of permanence in the constitution. It will not be correct to postulate that Article 370 achieved its life and what is a temporary provision assumes the state of permanence in the Indian constitutional fabric because then there was no question of any constitutional orders progressively being issued since 1957 onwards. Presidential orders on 54 yeah. occasions have been actually extended to that particular state. Article 370 can't be put on a pedestal higher than the basic structure. Correct. So all these things have been said so, sir, in the run-up to this. The simple aspect is 370 allowed a separate constitution, a separate penal code and a separate uh, functioning itself. The Sadre Riyasat itself meant Prime Minister of a particular Riyasat. That, that is a title that the Chief Minister, erstwhile Chief Minister uh, allowed the, uh, himself or herself. Now that is something which is unfair. And the instrument of accession, largely the body copy was the same for all the princely states that uh, uh, ascended and uh, you know acceded to the Union of India and to form the, for, form the Dominion. At, at that point in time, everybody could have turned around. A lot of the princely states had drafted their own constitutions, like, just like Jammu and Kashmir also had. But eventually they all went ahead and embraced the overall constitu constitution of Bharat. And till date, we are one of the largest democracies and perhaps a few democracies that continue to take oath with our heads of state on the constitution and not on any other religious textbook or religious book. Right now we are waiting for those five seats to be filled, led by Justice D.Y. Chandrachud, Justice Sanjay Kishan Kaul, San Justice Sanjeev Khanna, Justice B.R. Gawai, and Justice Surya Khan. They should be taking their positions very soon. 10.30 was a scheduled hearing. We are about uh, 18 to 20 minutes behind schedule. But it looks like uh, there is ah, some movement. movement. There you go. There is movement. And uh, one by one, I think, let's go full screen to try and understand what's going on. Yes, it looks like a uh, final set of papers, etc. Documents are being placed at the chairs of the various ch ch justices. The center chair, the tallest one, that is the, the one for the Chief Justice, Justice D.Y. Chandrachud. And then you would have Justice Sanjay Kishan Kaul, Justice Sanjeev Karna, Justice Gawai and Justice Kant flanking the Chief Justice on either side. Uh, Farooq Abdullah has reacted. If we have time, let's just quickly listen into what he had to say. <laughs> जो बोलना था वो बोल दिया कोर्ट में that's that that's the language and that's the tone adopted by just uh, by Farooq Abdullah now where there we see we see a lot of movement it looks like another minute or two we'll just have we to should see have them we should have them whether this will be a unanimous verdict yes, or will there be will differing there be split, opinions whether there will be 
people who will perhaps dissent on the bench. That would be interesting no, ho to hope see. Hope this actually. court recognizes that the official copy of the constitution did not have article 35A. The Supreme Court, when they tried to peruse this matter of 35A came to them and this is an anecdote that was shared with me. And I'm putting it here that when the just, Chief Justice of that time tried to refer to the constitution which they had to refer to, had no mention of 35A and they said we didn't even know something like this is operational in uh, an erstwhile state. Uh, the splitting of the union territories to union territory of Jammu and Kashmir and union territory of Ladakh actually has done a great deal of benefit for the Ladakhis who for a long time had been left uh, absolutely unattended to and looked uh, you know, uh, totally shunned by this entire power center that was focused in one valley that is Srinagar. So there were Even complaints. People of Jammu yeah, yeah. had a problem. I, I'm saying there were complaints of the people of Jammu, but Ladakh was a total blind spot. So there are a lot of things that have changed over the last four years because of the actions that were taken. But it's not about the changes that have happened, Farooq Ranzusha. It's about that very moment and the method that was adopted to let go of something that was painful, that was unnecessary, and that was void our own constitutional ethos. But how did we let it go? That's where the whole argument perhaps is going to be. Or, or do you think that is also settled, Farooq Ranjusha? Uh, I think uh, with the new perception, the things are so much settled also on 5th uh, August 2019. I was in your studio and I was with Rahul Shivshanka. He, al he also remembers that this was a point which Kashmiri were yearning that the local political monopoly mm -hmm. of holding the power in the garb of this uh, provision of the constitution when it will end uh, they were not using it for the benefit of the people why is the why is a one show me a one statement or one legislation mm -hmm. passed in the local assembly where interests of Thousands and thousands and the lakhs of lakhs of people of Ladakh, mm. Jammu and Kashmir were associated, which have been taken away. Mm. Rather, what has been taken away is that you cannot rig the election now. You cannot rig like you were uh, kidnapping the opponents mm. and killing them who would contest against you or you will not rig them mm. that you will uh, take over the polling booths and make it a terror booth. And no citizen of uh, particularly Kashmir would dare to go to the polling booth to cast his vote. So mm. th this was a manipul even exodus of the pundits mm. was not from by the people of Kashmir. It was by the political structure which was existing under this article who made it a point to criminalize and charge uh, the Kashmir on the criminal lines and uh, just uh, uh, differentize uh, Kashmiri pundits and nobody even today even pa uh, Supreme Court should have decided it that there should be election immediately after pundits are brought back mm. nobody it, it is only a slogan which is being hammered we will bring you back give us the vote <laughs> or we will not bring Kashmiri pundits back that the property you have snatched from them will be retained by you so uh